Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Imagine a time when cargo ships had to navigate the entire continent of South America just to transport goods between Asia and the US. That was the reality before the Panama Canal, a 50-mile waterway that revolutionized global trade. Since its opening in 1914, this engineering marvel has cut travel time, reduced costs, and fueled economic growth worldwide. But how was it built? What role does it play today? And how will it shape the future of world trade? In this video, we'll explore these questions with you. Section 1. Early Visions and Attempts The idea of a canal through the Isthmus of Panama dates back to the 16th century, when Spanish explorers saw its potential to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. In 1534, Spanish King Charles V ordered a feasibility study, but limited technology made construction impossible. For centuries, ships had to endure the long and dangerous route around Cape Horn or the Strait of Magellan, increasing costs and risks. The first major attempt came in the 1880s when Ferdinand de Lesseps, the engineer behind the Suez Canal, led a French effort to build a sea-level canal through Panama, then part of Colombia. However, dense jungles, mountainous terrain, and a harsh tropical climate made excavation difficult, while yellow fever and malaria devastated the workforce, killing thousands. By 1889, financial mismanagement and engineering failures caused the project's collapse. Section 2. U.S. Involvement and Construction After the French failure, the United States, under President Theodore Roosevelt, recognized the strategic and economic value of a canal and sought to take over the project. However, Colombia, which controlled Panama at the time, rejected the U.S. proposal. In response, the U.S. supported Panama's movement for independence. In 1903, Panama declared independence from Colombia, and soon after, the newly formed country signed the Habeanavarilla Treaty with the U.S. granting America rights to build and control the canal in exchange for financial compensation. Construction began in 1904, but the U.S. initially faced the same challenges as the French, disease and engineering complexity. The turning point came when Dr. William Gorgas, a U.S. Army physician, implemented large-scale mosquito control measures, significantly reducing cases of malaria and yellow fever. With improved health conditions, work resumed under the leadership of John Frank Stevens and later George Washington Gothels, who designed an innovative system of locks and artificial lakes rather than attempting a sea-level canal. By using a system of three lock chambers to raise and lower ships, engineers made it possible for vessels to cross the mountainous terrain of Panama. After a decade of intense construction and the labor of over 40,000 workers, the Panama Canal was finally completed. On August 15, 1914, the first official transit took place when the SS Ancon became the first ship to pass through the canal, marking a new era in global trade. Section 3. U.S. Control and Panama's Struggle for Sovereignty for much of the 20th century, the canal remained under U.S. control, serving as a critical asset for both commercial shipping and military strategy. During World War II, the canal played a crucial role in the movement of U.S. naval forces between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. However, resentment grew among Panamanians, who saw the U.S. presence in the canal zone as a violation of their sovereignty. Tensions culminated in the 1964 riots, where Panamanian protests demanding control of the canal led to violent clashes with U.S. forces. Negotiations over the canal's future continued for years until 1977, when U.S. President Jimmy Carter and Panamanian leader Omar Torrijos signed the Torrijos-Carter Treaties, which set a timetable for the transfer of the canal to Panama. On December 31, 1999, Panama officially gained full control of the canal, marking a historic moment for the country. Section 4 modernization and expansion. Since taking control, the Panama Canal Authority, ACP, has managed and modernized the canal, ensuring its continued efficiency. Recognizing the growing size of cargo ships, Panama launched the Panama Canal Expansion Project in 2007. The expansion, completed in 2016, added a new set of wider locks capable of accommodating Neo-Panamax ships, which can carry up to 14,000 containers, almost triple the capacity of the original locks. This expansion significantly boosted global trade, allowing larger vessels to pass through while reducing transportation costs. Section 5. The Economic Influence of the Panama Canal Panama Canal's economic influence can be analyzed from two perspectives. First, a catalyst for global trade. The Panama Canal is a crucial trade route that shortens voyages between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans by 8,000 miles, saving nearly two weeks of travel time and significantly reducing fuel and shipping costs. 
Before its construction, ships had to navigate the perilous waters of Cape Horn, making global trade slower and more expensive. Today, the canal facilitates 6% of world trade, serving as a key link in US-China commerce and the transport of grain, petroleum, and manufactured goods, reinforcing its role as a cornerstone of international shipping. Second, economic impact on Panama. The Panama Canal is the country's economic backbone, generating over $2 billion annually, about 6% of GDP, primarily through transit tolls, with some vessels paying up to $1 million per passage. Since 1999, the Panama Canal Authority, ACP, has leveraged the waterway to drive economic growth beyond shipping, fostering a thriving logistics and financial sector. The Cologne Free Trade Zone has become a major duty-free hub, facilitating global trade, while infrastructure upgrades, including modern ports and highways, have solidified Panama's role as a regional business center. Section 6. Challenges and Future Economic Considerations Despite its economic advantages, the Panama Canal faces several challenges that could impact its future role in global trade. Number 1. Climate change. One of the biggest threats to the Panama Canal is climate change, particularly its impact on freshwater availability. The canal relies on Gatun Lake to operate its lock system, and prolonged droughts have significantly reduced water levels. In 2023, severe water shortages forced canal authorities to limit daily transits, causing delays and congestion. As climate patterns become more unpredictable, the canal may need new water conservation strategies or alternative sources to maintain full operational capacity. Number 2. Increasing competition. While the Panama Canal remains a key passage for global trade, emerging alternative routes pose a growing challenge. For example, North American rail networks offer intermodal solutions that allow goods to travel between the Pacific and Atlantic coasts without using the canal. In the long term, climate change may also open Arctic shipping routes, providing a shorter, ice-free path between Asia and North America, further diverting traffic from the Panama Canal. Number 3. Geopolitical Tensions Geopolitical tensions, especially between the US and China, could disrupt the Panama Canal's role in global trade. Escalating trade disputes or sanctions may shift shipping patterns, while Latin American instability, through regulatory changes, labor strikes, or security threats, could impact operations. As a strategic trade route, the canal is also a target for global influence, and rising tensions may push businesses to diversify routes, reducing reliance on it. Section 7. Conclusion. The Panama Canal remains a vital engine of global trade, reducing costs, improving efficiency, and supporting economic growth both in Panama and worldwide. It has reshaped shipping routes, supply chains, and industry strategies, particularly following its 2016 expansion. However, as climate change, competition, and evolving trade dynamics present new challenges, the canal must continue to adapt and innovate to maintain its economic influence in the decades to come. All right, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more business insights. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.